So I'd like to work on a program which will hopefully um, which will hopefully tie in a lot of the concepts that we've been working on and actually provide context. So here um, we have a program which must be done in object-oriented programming fashion, right? And it utilizes encapsulation. That's obviously what you want to do, right? Because the idea of encapsulation and using getters and setters is really to limit off access to the user such that they may not be able to manipulate our instance variables in a way that doesn't actually represent the context of our program. So using getters and setters allows us to add constraints and we'll see the merit of that moving forward. So we construct a program which allows a user to enter their name in school and the program will keep track of a student's grades regarding these following things. So we have a programming um, section which takes care of test one and two and we also have concept tests which also consist of two concept tests right one and two and we have a programming final and a concept finals these are finals so we can sort of group this up here um, as programming concept and finals right um, and then here so this is like a little constraint that the grades entered must be within this particular range of zero through 100. Um, also, there must be uh, functionality which will allow sort of sort of the person using the program to, to sort of um, view their grades um, as they've updated them, right? And so it must represent those changes. It must update those changes. And the option to exit must be present, of course. So moving forward here, um, let's go ahead to programming and uh, clips. Uh, let's see. So so here, so we have a student class, right? So what do we know about an object? Well, we want to create a student object. An object is just simply a reference to, um, to a collection of uh, instance variables, methods, and uh, constructors. Now, the, the student class will essentially um, include everything which can be used later in terms of creating a tangible object. So here we could, uh, we have instance variables, right? So our instance variables recall um, are essentially going to be those um, those those tests, right? Because we want to actually uh, get and set those test scores. So um, they're all going to be private, obviously. Um, and that is, of course, because we want to be able to encapsulate um, or really limit off access to the user. So we have a private. Um, so let's just start with the programming tests, right? So we have a programming test one, right? And this is, this is going to be a double, right? So we have a programming test one. And we have, let's see, so we also have a programming test too, right? And we also have, um, we also have concept tests. So there would be one concept test, concept test one, and we'd also have a concept test two. Okay, so essentially, I mean, at this point, um, we recognize that I, I think we, we've used our variables twice, they have to be different names. Um, but at this point, I think we also have something else. We have um, we have our finals, right? So there's a programming final, right? And there's also, uh, in conjunction to that, a um, a concept final. Okay. Now, what we would do, I mean, if we had an integer x, right? Uh, what we'd want to do is we'd want to generate a getter and setter. Um, or X. And the way we would do that is we would do public, um, we would do, so the, the setter is not going to return anything. It's going to be void. Um, and it's going to be called set um, X. So it prefaces with, with set. And then it says this dot X is equal to X. And X would essentially be the variable inside this parameter. So that would be an integer, right? And this represents, I mean, the, well, inside the parameter really represents what the user will eventually enter. Um, and it sets this dot x, or rather the variable x on the class level, equal to the x on the local level. So that's what we want to do. And then for, obviously for the, for the setter here, we would want to return something. It's not going to be void. So we're going to return an integer here. That's what we're doing. And um, so we've set x. We want to return x. It's not going to take in any parameters, OK? It's not going to take in any parameters. It's just going to be called um, int set x, or rather get x. So the setter is prefix with set and the getter is prefixed with get. And so we say get x and we return x after all those modifications have been made um, on x. 
So this is the basic idea of a getter and setter. So a getter and setter, in this case, we'd have to make a getter and setter for each of these here. And that could really get tedious. So what we wanna do essentially is we wanna use a shortcut and that shortcut is we go to source and we go to, um, so there's this button here that says generate getters and setters. So if we do that, we can actually select which getters and setters we'd want. Um, and so all of these variables here, this is a part of the outline that we see on the right hand screen. And the outline, these are, these are essentially red boxes, which essentially just say, say that these are private variables. Um, and it also specifies the data, specifies the data type, so they're all doubles. Um, and so we can say, um, uh, so essentially we can say um, the access modifier is gonna be public and they're gonna be in pairs. So there's gonna be a getter and then a setter, a getter and a setter, a getter and a setter. We could also have it in setter, 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 and then getter, 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 but we're going to do set, get, set, get, or get set or get set, however the program functions. So it says generate, and then we have exactly what we want. Um, it's, it's set, get, um, set, get. And essentially uh, you can see on the, you can see on the right hand that all the methods, I mean, that's, that's really what a setter or getter is. It's just a special type of an, it's a special type of non-static, it's a non-static method. Um, and um, so you can see here that they're green, right? And so you can see this distinction that the instance variables, which are private are red and then the methods are green. And then it actually tells you what parameters they take and whether or not they're void. If they're not void, then what do they return? And so that's really um, the purpose of that, right? On the right hand side. So we can actually just safely move on to our, our main program here. And recall that we wanted to do a couple of things. So I think the first thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to um, get the name. So that's actually another thing that we don't have. I don't think we put a name here. Um, so let's go ahead and put a name. So we're gonna have a private string name, okay? And essentially this name um, also is gonna have a getter and setter, private string name. Um, we could actually just do this here. So we'll just say public, we're gonna make a getter first. Um, Cause I think that's the way the program, I think that's the way my getters and setters are being generated. So we're gonna say um, public string, it's gonna return a string. It's gonna be called get name. So we're gonna pass in a name, which the user will obviously be entering in. Um, and that name, so it's just gonna return the name that we find on the class level. But of course, before getting, we have to set. And so a set just returns nothing. It just sets and we're gonna set the name um, so, okay, so the thing about a getter is that it doesn't take any parameters. It just returns the class variable. The setter actually takes in a parameter and it just return, it just, uh, it says this dot name, the name that the user has entered um, or would, what the user enters is gonna be placed within these parameters and that's gonna equate to um, the class, the, the name on the class level is gonna be equated to the name on the local level and that's what we have. So we have successfully a getter and setter so we can move forward without any problems. So we, um, so we can say um, name of the student, right? Um, get the name, of, uh, set get, or let's just say set the name of the student, right? And then essentially what it's going to do is, well, let's see what we had. Um, so we're going to do a do while loop, okay? And inside the do while loop, this is our do while loop body. You do do and then two brackets, and then you have while, um, so there's going to be an option. And so while that option does not equal, let's say three, um, it, the do while loop is going to keep executing. Option is giving me an error because I don't have a variable called option which exists. So let me go ahead and say int um, option. E uh, so, so now I have an option. But of course, before all of this, I want to have a scanner if I'm going to be taking any input from the user new scanner system dot in that's how you declare a scanner okay and essentially now it's giving me an error because i actually have to import the scanner uh, variable or the scanner class um, import statement here once i have that i guess i can just ask them for uh, system dot print line enter name and then I will actually allow them to enter the name. I'll give them that functionality to enter the name. Name equals data dot next. I'm gonna do next line because I want them to enter two 
um, their first and last name, of course. Otherwise, I would do next. Um, and so here, so they've entered their name. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on an object of the student class and then say set, uh, set name. Now, why isn't this working? And then, and then essentially what I would do is I would enter in what they entered in, which is name. Um, it's not working because it doesn't know which class to refer to. It doesn't know to re refer to the student class. So essentially what we'd wanna do in this particular case is we would actually wanna create a student object. Student S1 equals, uh, so it's, it's gonna be called S1, uh, new student. And that's the default constructor. Um, now for, uh, so, so instead of saying object here, we can do S1. And that would work. Now it's going to go into our program and then set the name. It's not going to get the name until I, until I sort of tell it to get the name. Uh, but as of now, it's only set the name. So we enter a name and then we set the name. Perfect. Um, before, so we'd also, I mean, so we've had, we have our instance variables. We also want a constructor here. Um, in that constructor. So a constructor, the name of the constructor has to match the name of the class. So we say public student. And since we have no parameters here, it doesn't really make any sense right now to have per, uh, parameters. But um, since we have no parameters here, we don't have to use the this dot keyword. The this keyword is essentially used um, to distinguish between parameters and lo sort of local parameters, which you may have inside these parentheses and class variables. So here we can actually just take all of these variables and just um, just equate them to certain values because we don't have any parameters here on the local level. We'll equate them to certain values, certain default values, right? So these are obviously going to get changed, but um, they're just going to be set to default values for now, for now. But I do expect them to be changed um, sometime in the future when, when the program is uh, sort of a, uh, sort of enabled to interact with with the um, with the program. So I think I've misspelled concept here. So let's go ahead and say concept final. That'll give me an error because now concept the one the misspelled one doesn't exist. Okay, concept one or sorry final. And my getter and setter will also essentially say something. And that should work. So I think Okay, so at this point, let's just hop into the program here. So we've set the name, and now what we do here in this case is we ask them system.out.print. Um, so we're going to ask them uh, essentially um, enter an option, or let's just say press one. So what did we want to do? We wanted to do three things, right? So um, we're going to be pressing three buttons here. Uh, we're we're going to have the option to press three buttons. So we're going to press two and then press three. So it's press one to update course grades. Okay. And we're going to press two to view student information. And we're going to, and we're going to press three to exit the program. Really simple functionality here. Doesn't take too much. Um, this is giving me an error here because option hasn't been um, sort of initialized, but if I were to do zero, it would go away. Um, but I actually want the user to um, actually want the user to enter an option. So now that they've uh, sort of, they have their options, I will say option equals data dot next in, which is essentially taking user from the, um, or the option from the user an integer option. Now, essentially another thing that I want to stress is um, if I had int option inside here, if I, if I, if I had int option like that, um, this just wouldn't work because this option inside this uh, do while is not considered to be the same option inside here. In fact, this option doesn't even have a declaration. Um, so we actually have to make it exist outside um, the option. That's the only way it would work. It's all about uh, it's all about scope, right? 
So now that we've sort of asked the user um, to enter, to, so we, now that we've presented them um, options, we can say, um, and we're still inside the do well recall, we'll say a couple things. So if essentially their option is equal to, uh, is equal to one, we're going to do something. Um, else if their option is equal to two, we are also going to do something. Else if their option is equal to three, I think we'll be exiting the program, right? Um, so yeah, okay, so, so right now let's just work on option one. So if they do enter option one, that means they want to update. That means they want to update their course grades. Now there are many courses. I mean, there are many uh, there are many um, types of grades to update here. So let's just ask them whether they want to enter the programming, the concept, or the final. So let me ask them system .out print line which grade would you like to update? I'm gonna make this an EER or an ERR just to sort of make it red um, uh, so that it's helped me to, it helps me distinguish from the questions and the options. Um, so here, what, which grade would you like to enter? And so you can either enter the programming test grade uh, or the programming tests some dot out dot print line, the concept test tests, or the finals. So they really have three options to choose from. And essentially in the same if statement, in the same if statement, um, I can allow them to choose, right? So this is their, this is their update choice sort of, right? So they can update their choice and it's gonna be an integer. And now inside this if statement, it seems like I'm gonna have more if statement. I'm gonna have a nested if statement. So if their update choice is equal to one, then I am going to sort of ask them, I'm going to ask them, well, so that means they, that, that means, um, so I'm gonna say press one for programming tests, right? Press two for concept tests and press three for final. So if they've pressed one, then I know that they're going to go for programming tests. And so if update choice is one, that means I can ask them which programming test would they want to enter because recall that there are actually two programming tests. So which programming test would you like to update? And I'm going to tell them again, press one for programming test two Okay, and essentially I do the same thing for, or okay, so press one for programming test one, and then um, press two for programming test two. Okay, um, and again, this is their this is this now this is their programming um, choice, right? So that's going to be an integer, and. Now I'm going to have another if statement in here, believe it or not. But um, if the programming choice is essentially equal, equal to one, that means they wanted to update programming test one. And so here I can just ask them, um, enter programming test one grade or enter grade for programming test one, right? Enter grade for programming test one. And so this is where I'd actually allow them to do that. So it's going to be a double, right? Because my grades are entered in as doubles. Double programming test one. I'll call it programming test one. Data dot next double because I'm working with a double here. And in this case, essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, set the programming test one. I'm going to call the object, which is s1 dot set programming test one, that's going to call the setter. Oops, whoa. That's going to call the setter. And when the setter is called, I'm going to enter what the user entered in, which is called programming test one. So now that's set. Um, I know that was wild with the if statements going in and inside and inside and inside again. But um, so now I've set the programming test. So the thing is, um, if their update choice 
okay, so if, if their update choice is one, then it's asking, then you know they're asking for programming. And if their programming choice is one, then we've already taken care of that, right? Else if the programming choice is sort of two, equal to two, then we're going to ask them, enter grade for programming two. Okay, and then I'm going to again load in programming test two, the ability really to um, enter in a, um, a variable which sort of corresponds with programming test two. And then I'm going to set um, programming test two. And that's going to take in what they've entered. And so I've set the program. So I'm sort of done with if the option, if the update choice is, um, is one, but if the update so if the update choice, it's sort of wrong to call this update choice, right? Um, let me call this user choice. So if the user choice is one, then they can go ahead and do this. Um, and essentially, so now I'm gonna work with else if the sort of the user choice is Okay, one second. So I think I already have an else if that I wanted responsible for um, this. So if the, if the, okay. So if the user choice is two, so it says press, um, one second. So press two to, <laughs> okay, one second. So it's saying press one to update the course grades and press two to view student. So I'm still in one. So if the option is one, then Okay, I think I should call this update choice. That's fine. Um, now, if they want to update the concept test, right? So this is this is taking care of the programming test. Um, if they wanted, if they if they wanted to update the, if they wanted to update the concept test, so um, it would be an else if. So else if update choice equals to two, then I'm going to ask them, it's not a different line, which concept test would you like to update? And then I can sort of give them the option, press one for one and S2, and then I'll give them the option um, called concept test. Excellent, so now that, so essentially now I'm inside here, so th th this, this is update choice for programming test. Okay, this is update choice for concept. Okay. And if they so if they if they were to enter if they if the concept test that they want to update is equal to one, right? Um, then essentially what that's going to do is, is it, they they'd want to update the concept test one. So I'm going to ask them dot out up print line which concept or enter grade for concept test concept test one and then I'll take in that grade and then I will set concept test one s one dot set concept test test one and then I'll take in concept test one and then after that what I what, what I'll do is I'll assume that concept test one has been set but what if um, what if they chose concept test two so if the concept test choice was equal to two then essentially 
Um, I'm going to ask them to enter the grade for, for test two. And that's going to be a double. I'm going to give them the option. And I'll set concept test two. Excellent. So this is for the concept choice, right? So if I were to sort of, um, let's see, let's see this in full screen here. If I were to run this program once, see how it works. So I enter a name. Let's see, David, press one to update courses. Which grade would you like to update? So I could do programming test. And if I were to do two, so that works. It works for the programming um, one. Does it work for um, the, does it work for the, uh, the programming test or the concept test rather? So it doesn't, it just, it doesn't ask me for the concept test. So now we're in damage control. So <laughs> it seems like um, it's not going inside the concept test. So um, if the update, so it says if option is equal to one, that means they want to update their course grades. And it's asked me which grade would you like to update? Um, or so if I do choose one, it asks me which grade would I like to update? Now, if I choose concept test two, if update choice is two, in other words, if update choice is two, then it should allow me to sort of come inside update choice or inside this block of code, right? And it doesn't, doesn't allow me to do that. It's not really going inside update choice. So if update choice is one, it goes inside seems like there's a problem, right? So, yeah, so I think maybe if we add more, uh, if we add one more, then it's it's gonna segment out update choice for, for programming. And now these are two different blocks of code. So it should work now, it should work now. But I think it says there are some errors maybe. Let me take care of these here, probably don't need them. And I'm gonna bring that while up here. So this is the entire if and if option is equal to two. So this is the do while. Um, maybe I don't need this. I already have a while brace, essentially. Okay, so I think I think now I'll be given access to that particular block of code, which allows me to access the concept test options. So if I enter a name here um, uh, to update course grades, and if I do concept test, it now allows me to get inside the concept test. So um, if I do one, it allows me to um, enter the grade for for one. Now, if I were to do concept test two, um, it would allow me to do that as well. So I think up until now, we're absolutely fine. Um, and let's go ahead and do, uh, so what are we missing, right? So now we wanna do the finals. So if the update choice was one, that means they wanna access the programming. If the update choice was two, that means they wanna access the concept tests. Um, now, if the update, okay, it would be else if, right? So else if update choice is equal to two, or I think, let's see, is equal to three. Okay, so it's three for finals. If update choice was equal to three, then we're going to essentially do whatever we want inside this block of code, but I want to confirm that we're inside update choice three, just so I know I don't have any um, syntactical errors with my braces again. So if I go into, um, if I enter my name 
and I say update course grades. And if I say three for finals, it should say that we're inside update choice. And it doesn't, it doesn't say that. So there's clearly a problem, which is why I, which is probably good I caught this here. So I think as of now, we're in it, so we're still in else if update choice is equal to two. And that's probably confirmed, yeah. So we don't want a completely different choice inside a previous choice. And so the best thing is to put this outside. So this is its own block of code. And so now I think if we do update choice is equal to three, um, then it should allow us. So if I enter a name here, enter course grades three, it should say inside update choice three, which it does, which it does. So, and this is good, right? So, so if they, if they chose three, that means they want to update one of two finals, either the programming or the concept. So I'm gonna ask them that. I'm gonna say, well, which final exam would you like to update? And I'm going to do um, enter one for programming final. And I will do enter two for concept final. Okay. And essentially, by now, I, I will give them the choice to do that. So um, int final choice equals data dot next in and essentially I know that if if the if the if the final choice that they entered is equal to one that means they want to enter the programming final so I'll say what would you like the programming final grade to be enter programming final grade okay and I will allow them to enter a grade Programming final, I'll call it programming final. And it will be equated to data.next double. Right. And then I will set what they entered. So I'll do s1.set programming final, right? And it's going to take in a double called programming final. It doesn't have to be called programming final, it could be called anything, but just for the purpose of um, this video here. So so if they entered, if their final choice was one, then they're entering their programming final grade. Um, but if they're, so else if their uh, final choice is, is equal to two, then I know that they wanna enter their concept final. So I'll ask them, um, enter concept final. And again, I'll give them the opportunity to actually do that. And I'll set what they entered. Inside the set method. So set concept final and I say concept final seems like so like I have a problem here, right? So, hmm. so let's go back and see if set concept final is doing what we want it to do. So we say set concept final. Again, it seems to be misspelled, so it's not referring to the correct um, correct method. So now, now that should take care of the problem. So it seems like we've set that as well. And I think we've done exactly what we wanted to. So if they chose three, they can either set the programming or the concept, one for the final for the final programming grade, one for the concept, or two for the concept. You can set each one and it sets the respective um, grade, which I think works. Uh, but of course we have an error here and uh, that is because we are missing a semicolon. Excellent, so I think if I were to overlook this program, what we wanted to do was we wanted to ask so right now there's still an option one, even though inside option one, we have three different options, there's still an option one. So um, two for finals, three for finals. So which grade would you like? To, so if they if they don't choose to update, then I guess they're choosing. So let's just see if this works first before we move forward. I think that's a pretty good way to move forward is if um, we keep testing this along the way. And so if they wanted to sort of update their course grade and update their final, um, then if I wanted to update one, that would be the programming final, which works. Awesome. Now, if I were to do this again 
for um, for the final for the I think we for the concept final this works as well. So we're good um, now. If the student chooses, if their option again, we're, this is this is working with option. This is working with update choice. But if their option is, if they click two, that mean, that means they want to check their grades out, right, or their information. So this is L ending if option is equal to two. So else if option um, is equal to three, then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to display student information. Student, uh, let me just do Does that work. Um, so this is the student information. Let me just do it regularly. So the student is essentially going to have a name and that name can essentially just be, we're gonna do, we're gonna reference the object name and we're gonna say get name and that would work that way. And we are also going to have so this is gonna get lengthy here. We're gonna have a concept, we're gonna have, so let's just work with our tests first, right? So S1, so your, so we're gonna have a um, concept test one. Okay, so we're gonna have a concept test one. We are going to have concept test two. We are going to have a concept. Uh, we're going to have a programming. Now we're on programming. We're going to have a programming test one, and we are also going to have a programming test two. And in conjunction, we're also going to have our finals, right? So this is not to print final, final test, or final programming exam. And we will also have a uh, final concept exam. So for this one here, we're going to do S1, we're going to reference, we're going to get, and that's what our getter is for, right? We're going to get the concept test one. So get concept test one. And that's just a method, doesn't take any parameters. Uh, seems like we have a problem. <laughs> the problem is, um, so we reference concept test one, but we don't specify what we want to do. We want to get concept test one. Here we're going to do um, get concept test two. Okay. And here we want to do s1 dot get programming test one. And we're going to do s1 dot get programming test two. Here we are going to get s1 dot get programming final. And here we're going to get s1 dot get concept final. But I also want to do sort of after this, um, after it sort of declares, sort of states what their final uh, score is. I want to have it sort of in conjunction to a um, a percentage sign, right? So it just looks a little more um, realistic. Awesome. Uh, so if their option is three, it's to exit the program. Two is to view student information. So this is two for viewing for viewing student information. Otherwise, if they if they do three, um, I'll just print out. Thank you. Say bye. So let's go in here and um, 
check if we can view the information. So we know that we have a name, right? Uh, let's do this again here. So we know that we have a name and we can update the course grades, um, but let's view the student information. It should register the name. I don't think I've put the name. Have I said get name? So the name is David, right? So um, I, think, I think we wanna add some, some colons here. Let's make that just like that. Okay, so essentially, um, this is student information and then name, just to make it a little more neater, right? We can actually make these revisions inside here. So we enter a name and we, so it does show us the name. It does show us the name. Um, of course, it doesn't show us any of this because we really haven't, um, it's, uh, we really haven't updated these things yet, but we will shortly. But really what I'm paying attention to is how this programming, is, how this program is sort of laying out here. So there isn't, I mean, it, this seems to merge um, with this. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to actually give this like a space here sort of, right? So it doesn't merge with the line above. And that's just going to be printing out a line. And then maybe I'll have like a divider. Right. And maybe I'll have another divider for viewing student information, maybe. So student information. Hmm. Now, let's see. Let's see if this is a little more better. Hmm, I think I got this maybe on the wrong end. So this is a little more segmented out. And if I say, if I say two, then it gives me the student information. And then of course it sort of segments this properly. I think that's a little better. And now I can actually update these things and see if see if the program updates it. So let's go ahead to let, does it does it allow us to exit? It does. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do um, let's enter a name and let's go ahead and um, update our course grade. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to enter for the programming tests for for the programming test one. I got 99. Okay. Um, for for the concept test one, or oops. Uh, okay, let me just set both the programming test one and the con programming test two. So if I got 99 for programming test one, I'll get 98 for programming test two. And for the, for the concept tests, let's do, let's just say I got 50 on both, right? Um, so I got 50 on this one and I got Let's see. I got 50 on this one. And I only took one final, right? So um, I'm going to do update course grades. And for the final, I only took the concept final, unfortunately. And I only got 40 on that. Now when I click uh, press 2 to view student information, it should sort of allow me. So yeah, it really reflects what I entered, right? I haven't taken the programming final, so I don't know why. It's, so, it's, so, it's, so it's zero, right? So I haven't really entered anything yet. Another thing that I really wanted to state here was we actually wanted to sort of update these grades. Um, so what I mean by that is um, not, well, not update the grades, but we wanted to add a like a restraint, um, which is really the purpose of encapsulation. So if I enter a name here and I enter a course grade, like if I entered 
concept final one. Let's say I said 500%. Um, that, that's, uh, and then I actually, and I view that, right, in student information. It actually shows me that I have 500%. I don't want that to happen. The point of encapsulation is forcing the, the user of the program to go through your methods and the constraints which those methods may include. So in the set concept test one, in the set concept test one, so it's set. So with the concept test one, I don't want them to be able to enter 500%. That goes for any setter. So whether they're setting the programming final or the concept final or any, any of the uh, tests or exams that I've outlined here, I don't want them to be able to enter in values which don't represent zero through 100. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, look, when you do um, sort of set the concept test um, one grade, if the concept test one, and this is of course the variable that I'm using here. If I said co concept test instead of concept test one, I would use this down here. So whatever they're entering sort of represents this. So if whatever they're entering, which is concept test one, um, is, is less than 100, in other words, it's less than, less than or equal to 100, um, and uh, the concept test one, concept, test one is greater than zero, that means it's in the range of 100 through zero, right? Or zero through 100 rather. So if it's less than or equal to 100 and it's greater than zero, then and only then will I allow you to set the concept test you find on the local level or the concept test you find on the class level. Otherwise, I'm going to print out an error here, system.out.println. Um, grades must be one zero through 100. Okay. And I'll make this ERR to sort of add a, add a, like a red constraint to it or like a red um, color to it, to, to the error message. So if I do David and then I do update course grades and then I want to update the the concept for test one. And if I say, if I, if I, if I say 300, it's saying it's going to say grades must be zero through 100. It's not going to register. Um, it's not going to register 300. And I'll and if I if I if I open the sort of the student um, information here, you can see that concept test one has not been updated to um, 100. So I'd essentially want to go through wherever I'm setting a particular test. Um, like I'd want to do the same thing for concept test two. The same thing for programming final, um, and I'd want to add that constraint in. Um, now, suppose so. Suppose I wanted to essentially, let's say I wanted to add a school name, right? So what if I wanted the user to also enter in a school, um, which would be a part of their student information? Uh, then I, 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 mean, I could just do that, right? I could say, well, string school name, right, equals, or let's see, yeah, school name. School name equals data dot next line, right? They could enter two if they wanted to. Um, but of course, before I do that, I'll actually tell them to enter in, enter a school name. Now I can't, I mean, so this is fine, right? But I can't actually tie this down to the object because it's not, so this school name will essentially not be equal to the school name that I find in my object definition in my class definition rather. So what I wanna do in this case is I wanna be able to reference my object and say set school name. And that will be the school name that they enter. Now, of course this doesn't work because I don't actually have a setter or getter for school name, but I can actually add this. I can say public um, void, the setter is gonna be void. Set school name, right? Set school name. And then I'll do string school name and I'll say this, I'll say this dot name equals the school name that you find on the class level. But of course, I actually have to have a variable here on the class level called school name, private, private string school name. And now, I mean, it, now, now it works. Um, but what I could say also is that, look, if, if the, well, okay, so I could say if the school name um, dot equals, let's say NVCC 
or school name dot equals Virginia Tech. Um, so it, if it does not equal, or if it does equal um, MVCC or Virginia Tech, then and only then will I set this name um, to the school name. Otherwise, I'll just say that um, school must either be MVCC or VT. And so these are how these constraints are added here is really was what I wanted to show. Uh, let's see, so I'm getting an error here. Okay, so now when I actually present this a part of student information, I can say, okay, this is their name and this is essentially going to be um, their school, right? So their school is, and then I could, what I wanna do is I wanna say, I wanna reference the object and I wanna say get school, but of course, I don't have a school yet. So getting, I mean, I have a school, I've set a school, but I don't have a getter for the school. And so here I would just essentially do public. It's gonna return something. That's what a getter does, it returns. Um, I'm gonna say get school name, and it's not gonna have any parameters. Um, I'm just returning the class variable school name, which is of course this school name after these modifications have been made. And so at this point, I can just say, uh, I can print this out. It says get school. I think I said get school names, what I said. Um, in which case it would update the error. And now when I print this out, um, let's see, terminate that. I'll enter a name. I'll enter a school, NVCC. And then I'll view my student information to see if that actually reflects. So it does, right? It does. All of this is, of course, null and zero because I haven't set those values yet. Um, it says, <laughs> it's saying my name is NVCC. Um, it's probably not something I wanted to do. Let's see. It's saying, school, it's saying get name. I think I return school name. Return to the public string get school name return school name. It says school is null, so it's actually not returning um, get school name. So I'm actually running out of time here, uh, believe it or not, because um, I'm. I'll work on this and I'll update. I'll sort of make a part two um, for this one here. And uh, let's see. So set school name. School name. Uh, oh, so it's saying this dot name is equal to name. I don't want to do that. I want to say this dot school name is equal to name. And that's really the benefit of being able to. Um, that's really the benefit of encapsulating because you know where um, which which segment of your code is responsible for setting a name. And so you can go back to that segment and then judge what's wrong with that segment of code, which would be this segment. So I think now when I do this, it shouldn't show any problem. So if I enter David here and I enter a school name and I view student information, um, it, it sort of reflects what I want it to reflect. Um, but also you'll notice that if I enter something that's not in that range, NVCC or VT. So if I enter David and I enter a school, which is like, um, it's not gonna register this in the student information. It's just gonna say null for school. So I think that really um, helps us understand what we've been doing thus far. And some of the things, some of the concepts that we wanted to reinforce have been reinforced in my opinion. So. Um, there it is.